We are rounding out first quarter. We have three more quarters in this fiscal year for you to reach and achieve the financial freedom that you desire in your business. My question to you right now is, have you been keeping track? Do you know how much you were supposed to earn the first quarter in order to stay on track with that in which you desire this year? Money mapping and financial forecasting is a vital part of entrepreneurism. It is a skill set that you need to learn and develop to be able to manifest that in which you desire in your business. And today, we're going to go a little deeper into this so that you can understand the importance and how to move forward in 2024 and begin to achieve the things that you desire. I'm Lynn Louise, the Cosmic Valkyrie and your business coach. I am the creator of the Evolution 10X method, which combines ancient wisdom, brain science, and strategy to help you up-level your consciousness, master your thoughts, so that you can implement the daily operations of an entrepreneur in ease and flow. And today we're talking about financial forecasting and the importance that it plays in your ability to manifest in the age of Aquarius. You know I talk about the age of Aquarius a lot because we moved into it just this past January. So you'll probably hear me refer back to it for quite some time because this is a brand new energy that we all need to be able to operate within. I'm also going to talk a little bit about Mercury and how we can manifest through writing in the Mercury energy. So let's just get into Mercury first so I don't forget it because this is super fun. Did you know that you can manifest through written form using Mercury? Mercury is the planet of communication and written language. So all you have to do is go to your chart, locate Mercury, and figure out what house it's in. Now, if you need help with this, I started a thread inside my Facebook group. Go ahead and join. Put your house in there, and then I can help you discern what you can manifest through written form because it's all determined through the house in which Mercury is in. And then you can start utilizing that immediately. And I know most of you are probably journalers, so why not add this practice? Now, if you are like me and have Mercury in your eighth house, guess what? That's finances, and that's what we're talking about today. But this podcast is not about where Mercury falls in the house of finance. This is actually the strategy part. I just wanted to add that Mercury knowledge for your own enjoyment and to give you an easier way to manifest within your business. Because by determining where Mercury falls in your houses, you can accelerate your business growth through that particular house in writing. Okay, so I don't want there to be any confusion We're moving into the forecasting and manifesting more revenue, more money. You know I love to talk about cash. That's my jam because that's where I struggled with the most. So that you can really step in to being a powerful entrepreneur because there is a huge skill set and a big learning curve when it comes to becoming an entrepreneur. This is why I always encourage women to work with me and develop the exit strategy that you need to leave behind that nine to five. Because you can't just quit your job and think that everything is gonna be puppies and rainbows and your business is gonna fall into place if you have not developed the skill set. So we wanna collapse that timeline so that you can leave your nine to five more rapidly and really step into the power of creating the life and dream that you desire within your business. And it's 100% possible. And financial forecasting is gonna be a big one. I'm gonna keep this really simple because I wanna get you started. But like always, if you really want to dive into becoming the entrepreneur and learn all this amazing strategy, the brain set of a CEO, and really develop the ability to manifest and unlock that funnel of income that you have into your business, then we need to chat, right? We need to talk about the Evolution 10X Mastermind. So during this podcast, I want you to be aware of two things. What I'm telling you that you haven't known before this. And then I want you to question what you still don't know after all the information I'm going to give you. Now, if you're not driving, grab a pencil and paper because we're going to do a little bit of money mapping today. 
But if you're driving, just listen and enjoy and then come back to this podcast and do the work because this is very much kind of like a free webinar. The first thing that I need you to do is set a goal, a financial goal that you want to meet by December 31st. Now, this is not, I repeat, it is not a goal that is so outside of your realm of possibilities that your brain cannot comprehend how you're going to get there. This has to be a realistic goal, something that you believe that you can achieve over the course of the next 12 months, but also something that will make a difference in your life. Don't underestimate the power of an extra $1,000 a month in your bank account. For that matter, don't underestimate the power of an extra $500 a month. I'm saying this because so many women automatically want to jump to that 300 k year when they have made $0 in their business over the course of the past three years. So I want you to be realistic and comfortable with your goal. Now, if you've already had 100K a year, this is the perfect opportunity to give that really nice scalable number that still feels comfortable, but outside of your comfort zone. So go ahead and set this because here's the reality. You might have been able to create that six figures without financial forecasting, but scaling is definitely going to require forecasting. These are also called projections, financial projections. So once you set that financial projection, you want to be able to back map it. This means you're going to back map it into quarters and then you're going to back map it into months. Okay, and then that's going to give you the ability to see what you're going to do every week to reach those financial goals. So now that we've already finished one quarter, you're going to be determining what you want for the next three. But I'm going to use an example for four quarters so that you know what you're going to have to do next November. Okay, we set projections in November and every October I do a workshop on this because I want to give people the heads up on it. So we're going to calculate four months here. Now, let's say you want to set your goal for 40K. This is completely doable in your first year. 100% honest with you, 40K is totally an achievable goal. Sometimes people want to stay within the $32,000 range, and that's completely fine as well. I want you to be very comfortable because while this is a comfortable number, you can also exceed that number in your forecasting. So just know, set it as a goal that you feel like you can achieve. So let's say you want to set 40K for four quarters. How are you going to back map this? Now, you could do 10K every quarter, but I'm going to be honest with you. If you are at zero income in your business, then that is not really going to be how forecasting works. When we back map things, we have to understand that our first quarter is going to be when we're getting our business off the ground. This is going to mean that your income is going to be probably at its lowest, So we always want to make the first quarter of the year the lowest one. And this is true when you're scaling your business as well, because you're scaling it. So our energy normally works so that we're manifesting a little bit slower at the beginning of the year. And as we move through the year and we learn the skill sets and become really consistent at prospecting and all that, the thermostat on our money goes up and more begins to come in. And as we turn that thermostat up, the funnel to income gets wider and wider and we begin to bring more in so that the last quarter of the year is our biggest. That's normally how it works in all businesses across the board. So let's say you want that 40K. So you're looking at your first quarter and you're saying to yourself, okay, then if that's going to be the lowest, let's go ahead and project that I'm going to make 2000 in that first quarter. And remember what I said, do not underestimate the value that $500 extra a month can bring to your family. If you took that $2,000 and you spread it over three months, it would be about 660. 
666.66, I think. <laughs> um, but here's what I want you to understand. Your first month is going to be your slowest month in that quarter. So when you look at that $2,000, you're going to want to say, okay, my first month is going to be the slowest. So when I go into launch phase, I will project $300 that first month. It's making sense, right? So that first month, you're going to look at it and you're going to say, okay, I'm going to project that I will make $300 this first month. And then after that, you have $1,700 to divvy up between the next two months. So you could say, I'm going to project in February $700. And then in March, I will project $1,000. And right there, you have money map your $2,000. And then the next quarter, you would increase it. And then the third quarter, increase it until the fourth quarter. That's going to be your biggest month. And you want to do that with all the months until they total 40K. That's the easy part. Now, here is where most coaches struggle. They believe that the way they're going to get that revenue is by creating more content. This is not true because content is not a sell strategy. It is a marketing strategy. It is very much needed and y'all know how to do it. You've had those marketing courses. We're talking about business strategy here, okay? We're talking about sales strategies. So how you're going to achieve those is first off, you're going to have to have a lead generator developed. So if you have that, you're going to put that into use. You're going to have to host an event during that quarter or maybe even a monthly. I definitely teach all this stuff within the mastermind, but I want to share with you like the things that you're going to have to think about. And then you're going to have to prospect, set up calls, make sure that you're connecting with people that want what you have. Okay, so when we're talking about events, you can either host a big one once a quarter and go through that entire launch phase, or you can do them once a month. Consistency is really key when you're developing and getting your business off the ground or even scaling it. And one mistake that I see a lot of entrepreneurs making is they will do the same exact event month after month after month. And you know what this does? It defeats the purpose of a lead generator. So you don't want to do the same event because people will not see an urgency in joining it. You need to do something new that keeps them coming back every time. Even the people that have joined before, you want to keep them going on the journey until they say yes. So you don't want to lose them after doing the first one and they go, oh, I did that one last month. I don't need to do it again. You lost them. We need to close down those touches. It takes around 13 times for someone to say yes to you. That means you have to connect with them 13 times before they will fill the trust that they need to pay the money to work with you. Okay, so when we get that direct contact in a webinar or in a DM or in a comment, that's a good touch. When we take them out of cold to hot lead, this is when things really start materializing quickly. So you really need to start looking at what events am I hosting? And then you need to know what you're offering them. What are you going to pitch to them? And don't pitch multiple things in a prospect call, in an event. You just want to pitch one thing. You need to know what that offer is. Because if you pitch more than one offer, it will confuse the hell out of them and they will not know what is right for them, so they won't commit to either, okay? So one thing. But here's the beautiful thing about pitching at the end of an event, is that you ask to schedule calls with people, because it is those calls that you will be able to determine where they are and what they need, and what product is right for them that you have in your arsenal. Now, they're gonna come to the conversation already wanting to buy, so it's just a matter of helping get over their self-doubt because people don't sign up for sales calls unless they already want what you have and they just have a little self-doubt in there. If you get them on the call and you can't get past that resistance of self-doubt, you might have a better option for them to get started with you and you can offer it then. So let's recap. 
you got your financial forecast, then you're going to have to determine what type of events and when you're going to have them. You're going to have to create a lead generator to get people into your funnel system. When you get people in your funnel system, you're going to have to nurture them. You're going to have to start conversations with them. You're going to have to create a connection, a trust, so that they are willing to invest in you. Prospecting is something that you need to be doing every day. This is what's going to create the ease and flow. Knowing your offer. Now, if you don't have an offer that's already developed, that's okay because we don't want to develop one until people show an interest and want to start buying. But one thing I get really excited about helping coaches with is developing monthly memberships that can be that can be a form of lead generation to take clients on that journey with you. Then when they are ready to really make that leap and work deeper with you, it's an easy no brainer for them. It's kind of like having an event where they get to know you. And then after a month or two, they're like, what am I wasting my time here for? I want more. And then they dive even deeper with you. But it's also good to have a monthly membership because it helps you create that reoccurring revenue. And what is beautiful about reoccurring revenue is you can plug those numbers into your projections from the get-go. So if you build a monthly membership, then next year when you set your projections in place, you will have that membership as a reoccurring revenue that you can plug into that month, knowing that there will be some adjustments that need to be made. But overall, that's going to be consistent throughout your year. So that brings us to the last thing that you need to think about when you are setting your projections. You don't need to know the specifics on what you're going to offer. That's not important. You don't have to have a program developed. But let's say that you're like, ooh, I like the idea of a monthly membership, Lynn Louise, but I don't even know what that would look like or how I would even put that together. Don't worry. A lot of coaches have that same challenge. I just had a client in my mastermind when we started talking about memberships, thinking to herself, God, I don't even think that I could do that. I don't see how it's possible. And then in a week, she already realized that that was just a limiting belief. She crushed it. And now she's moving forward with a monthly membership. I'm just going to put your mind at ease. You have one in there. You just need help unlocking it. So if you're like, ooh, I want that monthly membership. If you're going to launch one, then you can plug in how many of those you think you could get in the first 30 days. How many could you get in the next 30? And so on and so on and so on. But you don't have to know the details. This is not something that you build it and they will come. We are not the field of dreams here. It is actually the exact opposite. You sell it and then you develop it. This goes with programs too. So if you're developing a masterclass, a mastermind, anything like that, then you already have this dream, this bigger vision. How much am I going to charge for it? Do not worry about the details of what it looks like at the beginning. Just plug in the numbers. We're working on financial projections We are not working on program development, but I'm going to tell you financial projections are way more important in your business than program development because that happens as you get clients and you understand more of what they need. So first you set the projections and then you begin to sell. You sell the things that you have already set into place within your projections through lead generators, hosting events, through your funnel systems. Now, remember what I said? What didn't you know about forecasting before you got on this podcast? Think about that. Second, how overwhelming was this to listen to if you made it all the way through? Are you thinking, what am I missing? How am I supposed to make those numbers work if all I know is content creation? Or even if you're ready to scale, I bet it made more sense, but what do you still not know? Because this was only a 20-something minute podcast. If I could cover this much in a short podcast, what else is out there? What becomes possible when you actually commit to this process and learn how to put your financial projections together so that it creates the ease and flow in manifesting that in which you desire. Because in order to manifest, you need two things in this age of Aquarius. 
You need crystal clear clarity, and that is what the projections give you. They give you the map to creating what you desire. The second thing is you always need to take consistent aligned action. Without aligned action, you are not going to get what you want because nothing in this life is free. So I want you to really sit and think on this for a minute. What do I still not know? If this is one aspect that you have not gotten a handle on, what are the other business skill sets that you might not know? And if you're ready to commit and create that 40K or 400K or 400 million, then book a call. The link is in the show notes.